going to start. Okay, so this next section is about ossification, which is the process of making bone. It's also called osteogenesis. Remember, genesis means creation, so osteogenesis, creation of bone. And there are two ways that bone develops. Intramembranous ossification, intra within a membrane, uh, is the less common form of ossification. It produces the flat bones of the skull, so all of these bones that make your brain case, your cranium, some of the facial bones, and part of your clavicle, but not all of your clavicle. I know, weird. The more common form is endochondral. And this makes sense. What it does, it's in cartilage. So what this does is the body puts down a layer of cartilage first, and then that cartilage ossifies and becomes bone. And in your long bone at the epiphyseal plates, you have a layer of cartilage that's constantly growing. And as it grows, it ossifies and a new layer of cartilage is built. So it's constantly doing this and producing more bone. So this is the how an intramembranous ossification works. You have an ossification center, which is a special area of mesenchyme. Remember, mesenchyme is the modified stem cells that create connective tissues. In this case, this mesenchyme is going to produce bone. So they, the cells inside this ossification center produce osteoid, tons of collagen, and the osteoid then becomes ossified. And so the, some of the um, osteoblasts that are making the osteoid, they become trapped, they become osteocytes. Once the bone is kind of formed, then some of it gets worn away and become to create the trabeculae. Um, and then some of the surrounding tissue becomes the periosteum. Okay, and then blood vessels come in and weave through to provide blood vessels to all this. And then you have mature bone, compact bone, spongy bone, compact bone, periosteum around both of those. All of this made from intramembranous ossification. If we look at a fetal skull, we can actually see a like denser spots, especially here and here, where the ossification centers are in those par uh, parietal bones. We can see ossification centers here and back here as well. So that's intramembranous. It starts inside this layer of soft connective tissue at this ossification center. And it creates mostly the flat bones of the skull. Okay, now, um, Endochondral ossification is going to require first that chondroblasts secrete the cartilage matrix, become chondrocytes. Then just like the osteoblast gets trapped, the chondroblasts get trapped. Then they die inside those little lacunae and they leave holes in the little matrix. Then the cartilage matrix becomes ossified and then the osteoblast, by the osteoblast laying down the osteoid, and then that gets calcified and we have bone. So this starts during fetal development. Um, all of the bones in the body, uh, sorry, most of the bones in the body, not the flat bones, most of the bones in the body are going to start this way. So whole bone develops first as hyaline cartilage. Then you develop um, bone collars or areas around it. Uh, that become ossified. As the main part of the bone becomes ossified, you still have this layer of cartilage at the ends, and then you develop ossification centers at the ends and in the middle. The medullary cavity starts getting uh, carved out as the ossification centers harden the ends of the bones. And then by the time you're born, you have these long bones that have a medullary cavity 
full of bone marrow, an epiphyseal plate at either end that's still cartilage, and then bone at the ends, okay, for the epiphyses. And then when you're done growing after your teenage years, the epiphyseal plates uh, ossify and become the epiphyseal lines. The medullary cavities become much bigger. And um, now we have no more cartilage except the articular cartilage covering the ends, okay? Now, when you're really old, the epiphyseal lines actually start to go away and be, that whole thing becomes spongy bone. So in some of the bones that we have in the classroom uh, that are sectioned, you can actually see, like barely see the epiphyseal line. What we have in these areas is a zone of resting cartilage and then a zone where the cartilage cells are doing mitosis really fast to create new cartilage. Um, a zone where they're hypertrophic, meaning growing a lot, and then where they're becoming calcified and then an ossification layer where it's becoming bone. We can see these epiphyseal plates on, um, on an x-ray. So we can actually do an x-ray of the hand and wrist of a person, of a child, and figure out how old they are because these ossification centers close up at a very predict predictable rate. So you can tell, you may not be able to tell whether somebody is 13 or 15, but you can tell whether they're 13 or 18 based on which of these ossification centers are still, or which of these epiphyseal plates are still plates and which have sealed up into epiphyseal lines. So here is somebody who's somewhere between 15 and 23. These plates are partly fused, but not completely. And here's someone that's younger with these plates still completely separated. Okay, so that's how you can tell the difference between a child skeleton and an adult skeleton. All right, so like I said, most of the bones grow by endochondral ossification. These flat bones, the skull, a couple of the facial bones, the jaw, and part of the, of the collarbone was always cracked me up, grow by intramembranous. Intra but everything else has to put down cartilage first and then become bone. Now, if that doesn't work correctly, then your long bones don't develop correctly. Um, and this is a form of dwarfism called achondroplasia or achondroplastic dwarfism. So the A means without, chondra of course, cartilage, and plasia means form. So if the cartilage isn't forming, then your long bones aren't developing correctly. The flat bones of the head still develop normally because they don't depend on that cartilage layer. So this is a form of dwarfism that's the most common form that we see in industrialized nations today, where the head is normal size, but the arms, legs, trunk are all short. The head develops normally because of intramem intramembranous ossification rest of the skeleton develop, doesn't develop normally because it relies on cartilage. So this is a, um, a genetic condition in which cartilage doesn't form correctly. We know that it's a genetic condition. Uh, it's actually could be any of, I think, 200 different uh, gene or different parts in genes that can contribute to this, though there's a, a bunch of different forms and some are more serious than others. Peter Dinklage, who was in Game of Thrones, is one of the most famous uh, achondroplastic dwarfs uh, today. And so I wanna show you another uh, video. And this one uh, is a scene that I hope speaks- Your uncle's in the awesome. Night's Watch. What's he doing back there? Preparing for a night with your family. I've always wanted to see the wall. You're Tyrion Lannister. The Queen's brother. My greatest accomplishment. And you, you're Ned Stark's bastard, aren't you? Did I offend you? Sorry. You are the bastard, though. 
Lord Edith Stark is my father. And Lady Stark is not your mother, making you a bastard. Let me give you some advice, bastard. Never forget what you are. The rest of the world will not. Wear it like armor, and it can never be used to hurt you. What the hell do you know about being a bastard? All dwarves are bastards in their father's eyes. Okay, so the reason I wanted to play you that one is that, um, not that I wanted you, I needed you to hear the word bastard 27 times, but um, I wanted to, to give you a little pop time, which you usually need about this point in the semester. A lot of community college students feel like they're not doing it right. Like, if they were doing it right, they would have gone straight to a four-year college and have, you know, like other people are doing it better. And I want to make sure you understand, first of all, that you are getting a better undergraduate education than most people at four-year universities. Uh, at most four-year universities, literally no one cares about the introductory courses. When I transferred from Glendale College to Cal State Northridge, I knew basic biology much better than everyone who had done the courses at CSUN. Also, <laughs> just, well, we're in a pandemic, um, the community colleges decided Back in May, we can't safely reopen. We're going to stay online. The four-year universities, except for the Cal State system, are still fucking around trying to decide whether they can give up the money and go online. I'm, they're putting money ahead of students. Community colleges are putting students first. And so if you feel like, oh, I, you know, I need to be, a, I should be ashamed because I'm going to community college or people act like community college isn't as good or as hard or as, as, you know, the right way to do it. That's not true. And I want you to never forget that doing it, going to community college, you're doing it the hard way and you're doing it a really good way. And Never let anyone make you feel bad about that. Because if they think the community college is way easier, they actually don't know what they're talking about. So you hang on to that and you be proud of you and you be proud of the work you're doing because you're doing a really great job. So, so. Also, achondroplasia, cartilage doesn't form correctly. <laughs>